Welcome to this video tutorial on creating hybrid 3D drawings in Rhino. Within this tutorial I'm going to be using a mixture of Rhino, V-Ray, Photoshop and Illustrator to compose and put together the different parts of this drawing and create this final 3D image. If you haven't already I'd recommend going back and watching the previous videos I've put together on terrain creation, excavation and also path creation within a terrain in Rhino and it was those steps that led to this model I have on screen now. Within this model I have many different elements each put on their own layer and this is going to be important for later on when we start to line weight each of these components by their layer and also start to texture them as well. So it's useful that you're modeling your paths all on a path layer, modeling your kind of walls or components on their own layer, the terrain on its own layer, so each of these is split up accordingly. Now to begin with we're first going to pick our view that we want to export our 3D image out. Now it might be that you want to switch to a parallel projection and you can find this in the properties menu to sort of flatten out the 3D image and have more of a sort of isometric or parallel view of your model or you might prefer to stick to perspective and have a kind of perspective view of the model. Um, sometimes I quite like to make the lens length a bit higher on the perspective to flatten it slightly but still have a little bit of that perspective look to my views. Once you've picked the kind of view you want, it's important to then save it so we can then merge up our rendered version and our line work version of our image into our hybrid composite drawing at the end. To do this we go to the view panel, go down to set view and named views here. I'm just going to clip this to the side of my properties menu and remove these previous views. And once we've got the view we're happy with, I'm going to click on the save as icon. And I'm just going to save that as 3D. And what that means is if I accidentally roll around or choose a new way to look at my model, if I want to go back to that 3D view, I can double click on that named view and we'll snap back to it there. So now we've got my view set, I'm going to start by doing my 2D drawing of this model. Now to do this I'm going to be using the make 2D function, but before I do that I'm first going to be adding a few contour lines to this terrain. Often when you do a make 2D with terrain such as this you can't really see each of the kind of the moves the landscape is doing within the Make 2D because it just gives you the outline of the terrain. So we can use contours to help with this. And what I'll do is I'm just going to select this terrain piece, we're going to select these paths as well, and just these elements here, so the paths and the terrain, so the main pieces of ground but not the walls to add contours to. Once we've selected those I'm just going to type in contour into my command line here hit enter, it will ask for a base point and for this I'm going to choose the bottom of my little axis square I've got here and then we're just going to take a point directly above that so it knows to cut the contours in that direction, so in a vertical direction there. The distance between those I'm going to set as one meter like so and then I'm just going to hit enter to run that command and there you can see we've now got our contour lines on our model. What I'm also going to do is with these contour lines selected in the properties panel I'm just going to move them onto their own layer I've prepared already called contours and that way they've also got a layer on that file. So now we can clearly see each of the kind of moves that terrain is making with the contour lines there. So then we can go back to our 3D view just by double clicking on our named view there, select my objects and type in make 2D to create a 2D drawing. For this I'm just going to make sure that we're using the view that we've set here, so the view here, we've got maintain source layers turned on and we've also got this viewport rectangle turned on and this is really important for when we want to then merge up our line drawing and our render later on in this video. So I'm going to hit OK there and let that make 2D come out and then we're going to go to the top view, just move this out of the way and we're going to save this out by going File, Export Selected, and we're going to export it as an Illustrator file, like so. And we'll just call this Lines. And we're going to use a snapshot of the current view. Because I'm just doing a perspective view, I don't need to worry about the scale as much, so we'll just do a snapshot and hit OK there. 
And you can see here that even in the Make 2D, the lines have kind of kept their colors from their layers. And that's because I clicked on that Maintain Source Layers options when I exported it. Now we've got that exported, we're gonna open up Illustrator and start to edit up these lines. Now I have my drawing open in Illustrator. The first thing I'm gonna do is open up my Layers panel. And here I can see that each of those separate layers have gone in their own Illustrator layer as well, which is gonna make this drawing very easy to add line weights to. I'm then gonna just select my lines here and we're just gonna scale this up. I'm just holding the Shift key to lock in that scale accordingly just up to a more sort of reasonable size and around this kind of A4 page size will be fine for what I'm doing here. Once I've scaled this up, I'm then also going to go to the document setup, go to edit artboards, and we're going to edit this artboard to match that frame that we've got in our Make 2D. And if you just hover over those edges, it should automatically snap onto that frame like so. So we're just going to go around each of the edges and snap it to our frame there. And once we've got that, you can just click off back onto the icon and it will go back to the artboard like so. Now I'm gonna add line weights to each of my layers and I can remove that frame now I've set my artboard to match that frame. And we're just gonna go through each of the layers adding a line weight to each of these. Um, I'm gonna start just by making the whole image with black lines here. And then with these layers open, I'm just gonna select each one in turn. So let's start with maybe our contour lines here. And if we click on the little icon next to the layer there, it will select all of those contour lines. I'm then gonna change the stroke and we're gonna start with the kind of lightest lines working our way up to the thickest lines in the drawing. So the contour lines want to be quite light in this drawing. So I'm gonna go for a 0.1 point and I'm also gonna add a dash line to these. And we're gonna go for a three point dash. And this is usually a good starting place for the line. So you can see that's quite light there, very sort of subtle contour lines there. We can always go back and edit these if we want to afterwards, but I think that would do for the time being. So I'm just gonna go through each of my line work, giving it a different line weight, depending on its hierarchy in the drawing, and then locking it once I'm sort of happy with that particular line weight. So I'm just gonna pause the video and carry on line weighting these pieces in the drawing so we've got our nicely line weighted drawing. Now I've got my drawing completely line weighted and I've tried to do a thicker line for the walls and a slightly thinner line for the paths here and then a slightly in between thickness line for the kind of terrain there. So each line has a slightly different thickness depending on its hierarchy and importance within the drawing. Now that's ready, all we're then gonna do is just go to file and we're gonna export this line work out as an image file. So I'm just going to export as, we're gonna click on this use artboard to make sure that the image we export is constrained to the size of the artboard we've set. We're gonna call it line work again. Here, and I'm just gonna export it out as a PNG this time. And the reason we're doing it as a PNG is it will mean it will stay kind of transparent in the image. We won't have any background on there. So if we want to switch the background color later on, we can do that. So we're gonna hit export there, keep it as a high resolution and hit okay. And that's our line work file done. And we can now find that in our folder that we have our line work line weighted and saved there. So now we've done that portion of the drawing, we're now going to go and do the rendered version. So I'm going to go back to my Rhino file and we're going to go back to our 3D view here and we're going to start working into the rendered version of this image. Now to start with, we're going to begin by just adding some basic textures onto my surface and my terrain and my geometry here. I'm going to be using V-Ray for this, so obviously make sure under your render setting that you're set to V-Ray for Rhino and make sure we're still snapped to the same view whenever we're rendering. Now I'm going to open up the asset editor first and actually before I begin to add any new textures to the scene I'm going to first open up the frame buffer and we're just going to render out a kind of white render of this and this was the previous one I've done but I'm just gonna render out a new version just with the right render, just so we have the shadows of the image because these might come in to use later on if we want to add shadows to our line work and we want a sort of more pared down version of the image. Before I hit render, it's always good to go to your settings, 
check under your render output what sort of size the image is going to be and make sure we're also set to match the viewport there and this will allow me to easily line up my line work and my rendered imagery so we're always going to use that match viewport setting in the aspect ratio i'm going to set this to around 2000 pixels which should be fine for what i'm doing for this image and once i'm happy i'm just going to hit the render button now I haven't added any textures at the moment, so we're just going to get a white render of this. If yours is heavily overexposed, you'll just need to go to the display correction here and just scroll this value down until you can see it. By default, it might be set to zero, and so you might get a very overexposed image. So we'll just lower that down to around a four value there. And I think that's fine there. So once that's done, we're then just going to save that image out. And I'm just going to save it in this same file as a JPEG. And we'll call this one Shadows. Like so. So we've got our shadows there. And now we're going to begin to add a few textures to this image. So I've got a few textures made here, but we're going to ignore these ones. And we're going to make a brand new generic material. And I'm going to call this Ground. Here. And all we're going to do is I'm just going to select my ground texture under the diffuse. I'm going to drop in a texture for that. And I'm going to be using this rock texture here for my ground. So I'll open that up, put it in. It might be that you also want to add in any displacement or bump maps to this. I'm not going to go through those in a lot of detail in this video, but I'll link in the description to other videos going into more detail on how you create particular textures or materials for these particular objects. Because we've set all of our objects up in their own layers, as we can see on the right hand side here, what we can do is once we've made our material, we can right click on that material and click apply to layer. And then I can just pick the terrain layer for which this applies to, to drop that material directly on the layer and affect all of those objects on that particular layer. You might also need to select the objects on that layer just by right clicking and going select objects and add some texture mapping under the properties and texture mapping. Usually I go for a box mapping and this will indicate the size of that texture upon the surface. So usually I just draw out a kind of random size to start with and we can fine tune it afterwards. And as you can see if we render that out now we then got our kind of texture on top there. And if we need to resize it under this X, Y, and Z size here, I can resize it accordingly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around and do that same process for the other objects in the scene. And instead of kind of individually applying the materials to the objects, I'm gonna use that right click and apply to layer option to apply them to each of the layers respectively to speed up my workflow in this method. So I'm going to pause this video and go through those materials. And as said, if you want to watch any other videos on material creation, I'll drop links to those in this video description. Now I've completed texturing up my model. My view currently looks like this. And we've got kind of a texture for the landscape, some sort of red concrete walls here. So it's got these sort of golden benches we've put in. But we have our sort of model ready and textured. Now before I do the final render, I'm also going to add in some trees to this model, which we're going to scatter across this landscape. For these trees, I found some free trees on TurboSquid, which I'm going to download, and we're going to use these and scatter these across the landscape here. Um, I'll put a link in the description for these trees, and we're going to load these directly into our Rhino file. So to import them in, all we're going to do is go to File and Import here. Once we've located these trees, we're going to locate the OBJ file that comes with them, and we're going to just open that up, and we're just going to hit OK for this. Now, usually trees might come in much larger than your model, or much smaller, so we might need to rescale them once they import into the scene and get them down to the correct size for us to use within our model. So you can see here, they've come in, but they're very large compared to everything else. So what I'm going to do first is just go to the scale 3d tool press enter to allow it to be scaled from the center point and we're going to just do it at a thousandth of the scale it's come in quite often they'll either come in of a factor of a thousand too big or too small so let's do a 0.001 scale 
drop them down and then we might have to move them and relocate them back to our model here so I'm just going to use the gumball to do that and we'll zoom back in and I think that looks maybe a little bit too small now so we can always scale them up again I'm going to just twist them around using the gumball as well um, for this particular example I only want one of these trees um, and we're going to use this one on the right hand side up there and let's just make it a little bit bigger so we're going to scale it again hit enter for the center point and we'll scale it by a factor of two this time so just double the size and I think that looks about right for the size of my landscape there now what you'll find is when you bring in a tree like this if we go and try and render that out it probably won't look quite right some of the textures might be missing or it might have no textures at all as you can see here we've just got this sort of white tree object so first we need to texture this tree up now to do this we can open up our V-Ray and what will happen is when you bring in an object such as a tree like this it might have automatically created some textures for that tree now actually on here it looks like we haven't got any kind of automatic textures for this tree so we're going to have to make some ourselves. but that should be fine we're just going to make a new material we'll start with this generic one for the leaves and we're also going to make another one for the bark here now when you download this tree asset quite often it will come with a series of textures and this is the folder that the tree comes in and we've got a bark texture here and some leaf textures here as well so we're going to use these to create our leaf and tree bark materials to do this I'm just going to select the leaf material for the color we're going to click on the bitmap and we're going to load in that particular leaf file there and as with leaves as I've gone through in previous video we need to make sure we use this opacity map drop a bitmap into here as well and use this black and white image to cut out the leaves from their background giving it that opacity look and giving it that leaf shape that we know so once we've done that we're also going to do the same for the bark just loading in that bark bitmap there like so and that's going to be our texture for our trees now we need to apply those to the objects here so to do that we can just select the leaf mesh here and usually they're split up as you can see so we can select that right click and apply to selection to apply the leaves there select the trunk right click on the bark and apply to selection to apply the bark there and once we've done that and if we re-render that view we now should have our tree with the correct textures on and here we can see it's now looking correct in the scene so now this is ready to go and be applied onto my landscape geometry across my scene now before I sort of use a scatter tool to apply this tree what we're also going to do is we're going to turn this mesh into a proxy and this is going to limit the file size lower our file size down and also up the render speed of our particular scene we're rendering when dealing with trees they're very high resolution models so you often get sort of slightly slower run times and rendering speeds when using them within your models so if you select the object and we can either go to the v-ray panel up here under v-ray objects we can go export proxy there it will ask for a location of this proxy I'm just going to put it in its default location and hit export there and what it would do is it will replace that high density mesh with a proxy file which looks a little something like this it's a kind of simplified version of that file and once we click on the render button to render out that proxy it's going to replace it back to the high resolution mesh when we render it so in our viewport it looks very simplistic but in our render we've got the complex mesh of our tree and it just lowers our file size down and makes the whole file a lot easier to work with now once we've got the proxy sorted we're now going to scatter this across our landscape and to do that we're going to use a V-Ray scatter tool now this is found in V-Ray and if we go to create asset up here we go to geometries we can find the scatter geometry there we're going to make a new scatter and we're going to open it up in the geometry panel and I'm going to call this trees 
um, we're going to just select the terrain that we want to scatter the trees on, which is this terrain here. Right click and click on apply to selection. So that scatter is applied to our selection. Now to add the trees to this geometry, we're then going to select the tree, make sure we're on our tree scatter here and click on this add guests option here. And you'll see there that that has now been inserted into the scatter. And if I sort of move this panel across a bit, we can see we've got lots of trees currently scattered across the surface of this geometry. And that's what those kind of green boxes are. So obviously I'm going to need to play around with this density value because we've got way too many trees currently scattered across this surface. So if we open up that scatter and we lower that density down, I'm going to do a 0 0.01 or 0 0.01 even. And here you can see we've got far less now. So the green box here represents one tree on that geometry and we've got far less scattered on there. Now as well as the density we can also scroll down and affect the scale and currently it's got a minimum scale of 0.9 of the original object and a maximum scale of 1.1. Now I'm going to change this and we're going to do it to a 0.5 so some of these are going to be quite small some of these are going to be larger and then I'm going to up the density slightly again 0.2 and this density value will really depend on the size of the meshes you're scattering and also the size of your landscape if you're doing it on. Now what's quite nice to do is we can open up our render and have a look at this view that we're rendering out and then have a look at our scatter properties at the same time and I'm just going to adjust essentially the density of the scatter until I get to a nice value. If you don't like where the trees are scattering you can also change this seed value and that changes the location of these particular trees. So we can kind of scroll it along until we've got something we like. I think these are all a little bit too big still, so I'm actually going to change that scale down to something a bit smaller. And it's good to just play around with these settings until you get the look that you're going for with your particular model. And we'll just have a quick scroll around until we find something nice there. And I think that's working relatively well maybe yet yeah. maybe the five i think is good there so i'm quite happy with how that scatters working there and the density of my trees on my object so once you're happy with that we can then render out the final image to do that we're going to make sure we just double click back on our view so we definitely know we've got our viewport locked in we're going to go back to our v-ray under the settings make sure we're matching the viewport there as well and then once we're happy we're just going to hit the teapot button to render that full image out there. And I'm just going to let this image render out now as well. Now the render is complete, now I'm going to click on the save icon here. And just in that same folder we're going to save this also as a PNG. And we'll just call this render. Like so. Now we've got all the parts of our image, we're now going to stitch these all together in Photoshop. With Photoshop open, we're going to begin by just selecting one of our renders and we can start with our kind of coloured render here and just opening that up within our Photoshop file. Then on top of this, I'm going to take my line work that I've exported from my Illustrator file and we're just going to drop that on top like so. Now you might find, as you can see here, that my line work is coming a lot smaller than my render. If we sort of zoom in, it's quite hard to see. But if I turn the render off, we can then see that the line works there below it. To allow yourself to see the line work a little bit more clearly, I sometimes just make a layer at the very bottom of this and just make this white so we can see that line work clearly. Now, in order to get my line work to line up with my render, because we've matched the aspect ratio of these, all we need to do is hold the Alt key down, click on one of the tabs, on the kind of left or right of the image and then we can click and drag this up and just snap it to the edge of my file like that. Once that snaps it should then automatically be lining up with the image below and you can see that here that if I turn on and off my render my line work will automatically line up and the reason for that is because we kept it locked to that image aspect ratio when we did the line work and the make 2d and when we did the render. Now what I'm also going to do is we're going to take that shadow layer we've got here and we're also going to drop that into the file like so. And because we rendered that at the same aspect ratio as the coloured version, 
that should automatically line up. And I've just dropped that below the line work there. Now we could have it where we just want to combine the shadows and line work. And as you can see here, this is quite effective in just kind of adding those shadows underneath that line work to give this a little bit more three dimensionality. We could always with the shadows, you can just use your magic wand tool to select the gray area if you didn't save it as a PNG like this. Um, and hit on the mask tool. If you hold the alt key, when you click that mask tool in the bottom right, it will hide or mask off the rest of that image there. And then we can kind of change the opacity if we want to kind of give those shadows a stronger or lighter look like so. So there's our shadow image. And now we've got all of these parts stacked up in this way. I can move my render to the top of the image and we can actually just start to kind of uncover or hide certain parts to allow us to create this hybrid version of this image. So it might be that you just want certain areas of the rendered image showing. Maybe it's a kind of a small square component here, like so. We just want this rendered. So what we could do is we could select that, take our rendered layer and just add a layer mask on top. And because these line up, it then allows us to kind of show that layer and sort of overlaid on top of our rendered version. Maybe we want a kind of circular area here uncovered. Maybe you want it sort of an actual circle like so. So we can select that. And then because we've got this mask already on, I'm just going to use the eraser to kind of get rid of there. And we can uncover that portion of the image. It might be sort of multiple circular zones that you want to kind of uncover within this render as well. So we have the freedom of how we want to sort of combine the rendered version of the image with the line work version of there. And because we're using masks, we can always go back and just get rid of certain areas if we want to, just using that erased tool just on the mask here. And you can see I'm just kind of uncovering or covering up certain areas using that mask like so. So this was just a quick tutorial on how you can create a sort of rendered version and a line work version of a sort of 3D AXO like this and how you can start combining them together in Photoshop as well. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on creating renders or drawings in Rhino and V-Ray, please check out the videos on the channel.